been a few days since Liverpool got absolutely annihilated 7-2 by Aston Villa. Didn't do a match reaction video the next day, video the day after. Why? Because I didn't want to. Um, I can take losing. I've seen Liverpool lose many, many a time. We've been very fortunate in the last couple of years to see a Liverpool team that is very, very competitive, very difficult to beat, and has lost very few times. Um, literally in the Premier League, very, very few times. I think there was a stat going in the game, something like in the last 124 games or something like that, we'd only lost 10 times. But we were completely picked apart and dominated in this game. It was ridiculous. It was honestly ridiculous. Um... I'd said in my preview, I felt that we were going to win the game 2-1. But I also made the point of saying, if we go, if we don't show up to the levels that we need to, there's a good chance that we'll lose this game. Now, I didn't think we were going to lose that big. No way. I didn't think we were ever going to be on the end of anything more than a like four goals past us, five goals past us, something like that. Now, people were obviously, and I, I stay silent until Liverpool play, but a lot of Liverpool fans were obviously getting in and amongst it because Manchester United lost 6-1 to Tottenham. Cool. No problem. Abysmal performance by United it was. But we went and got beat 7-2 by a team that scraped through relegation last season. Aston Villa are no joke. Now we're going to move on from talking about Aston Villa. They were fantastic. They played really well. Um, and it was one of the most gut-wrenching performances I've ever had to sit through. It really was. I, I'm not even joking when I say that. It was horrible to sit through watching that. Watching my team, that basically, apart from Sadio Mane, I'm looking at the lineup now, apart from Sadio Mane and the fact that Thiago, um, the both of them have got COVID-19 and that Henderson was on the bench, that's a full-strength Liverpool lineup. Alarm bells straight away. <sighs> it's not all down to one person. It's not. But when I look at that Merseyside derby coming up after the international break, and we're going to be putting Adrian in goal, I like Adrian. I liked Adrian when, you know, he helped us win the Super Cup, helped us um, when Allison was out injured last season for a long period of time. Allison's apparently out for four to six weeks. If I'm Liverpool right now, there was there was a there was a joke tweet that went around about um, Adrian has had his contract cut and all that sort of stuff. In the moment, I was like, yeah, totally, absolutely. There was just mind-numbing things that Adrian did in that game, that the passes out from the back, the, pa the wayward passes to Joe Gomez. Joe Gomez doesn't come off well in this either. It's just, it was a horrible performance. I'll tell you what it was like. An absolute legend of our club in his final game for Liverpool lost 6-1 to Stoke. And that, that team was nowhere near the level of this team right now. And we got beat, hammered, hammered 6-1 by Stoke. I believe, if I remember rightly, they were 6-0 up at one point as well. And Stevie G scored the, I think he scored the goal for us. And then he left. This is hands down the worst performance that I can remember aside from Stoke. Apparently we haven't lost like this since like 1963 or something like that, whenever it was. There's a couple of things that will come from this. I'm not going to say, oh, there's three things because I'm probably going to come up with things off the top of my head. I haven't planned this video at all, but it's talking points that I want to talk about as well. Um, this Liverpool team... Needs plan B's, plan C's, maybe even plan D. Now, they went to a 4-2-3-1 later on in the game, and maybe even in the second half. I would like to see us starting with that. I'd like to see us being a bit more defensively solid, but I'd also like to see us being a little bit more, less defensively naive. It's great that Liverpool want to press the action. It's great that Liverpool want to be so high up the pitch and have everybody involved, having your centre-back sat on the halfway line. It's very, very... It's very, very pressing. It's very, very, here we are. We're going to try and control you. We are going to put the pressure on you. However, it's very easy to sort of find that out. It's the quality of players that we've had and the pace of our players that have got us out of trouble. 
And I'm talking about Allison, talking about Van Dyke. I'm even talking about Joe Gomez there as well. Not talking about Andy Robertson or Trent because they're never in defensive positions when we're in attacking positions because they are attacking. That is what they do. They're up high up the pitch. It leaves us exposed. So having Van Dijk and Joe Gomez as your centre-backs, Gomez obviously because of his pace, but now obviously people are calling for him to be dropped. There's no one else to come into that spot. There's no one else to come into Virgil van Dijk's spot. You can talk about having maybe Billy Cometio come in. It's a lot of pressure for a young lad to come in, you know, 17, 18 years old, who looked very, very good in pre-season. But even so, he's still very, very young. A lot of pressure. Joel Matip, still injured. Don't know when he's coming back. Apparently it's middle of October. We're nearly in the middle of October right now. So we don't know when he's coming back. Other than that, there's not a lot really to choose from. There's Simicas, but he's a left back. And whether he's going to be fit and available, we don't know. We don't know how we can play these sorts of things. You've got Fabinho that can play as a centre-back and did very, very well against Chelsea in the game. Kept Helped us keep a clean sheet. Kept Timo Werner very quiet as well. Look, we have options. Definitely we have options. But we don't have as many options as people think. You know, there's not really many things that we can really turn to. There's not really like, oh, Joe Gomez is out, we'll go to um, centre-back B or centre-back C or centre-back D. Don't have that. You know, we really don't have that. What I would like to see us doing a little bit more is, I believe if you play a 4-2-3-1, and I've said it before, you play a 4-2-3-1, you've got someone like Fabinho, right? You can have Fabinho drop in between the two centre-backs. Then you've got three at the back. All right, so when you're attacking, you can take him back a bit, little bit and then you've got three people that are covering the back line. It's maybe not ideal and you still don't have your right back and left back covering either, which would turn it into a back five. But even so, you've then got cover. You've then got someone that can help. You've also got people that are, you know, Fabinho and Van Dijk especially, people that are good passers of the ball. have got good vision, you know, short and long passing as well. That could help us. It really could help us. There needs to be other tactical things that we can do. I am no tactical expert at all. But the way the way we were getting overran by Aston Villa, and we were we we've always been known as the team that presses, one of the best pressing teams in the world. And yet we turned up to that game as if literally as if someone forgot to put the rechargeable batteries on charge and they were on very, very, very low right from the start right from the start. And this goes for every single player on the pitch. I don't care that we scored two goals. Every single player on the pitch. Just as if your batteries are running out. It's like it's like if you know them, like a cassette player running out of batteries, right? It's playing the music absolutely fine. Top, top you know, full tempo, everything's going really well and then the batteries start to go and it starts to dip and you start to hear the performance level in the audio going really, really low, really badly, and it starts to slow down. It starts like a tr like a train that is just losing speed and momentum and it starts to come to a stop. That's what we were like against Aston Villa. And I look at that Merseyside derby coming after after the international break, which will be before Alisson is scheduled to be back. So Alisson won't be a part of it. We don't know who's going to get, um, you know, who's going to come back off international duty. Who's going to have to quarantine? Who's going to end up with the coronavirus or COVID-19 testing positive, who else is gonna is it going to happen to? And it's not just going to be Liverpool, it's going to be other teams and their players as well. But our players will end up in maybe worse spots. We're going to have to maybe put out different sets of players for the Merseyside derby. And make no mistake, Everton are the informed team in the Premier League right now and they're doing very, very well. Doesn't matter who they've come up against. They're doing very, very well. They look defensively very good. They look offensively very good. Very dangerous. Calvert-Lewin looks like an absolute... Looks like a prime Inzaghi. He's, he's, he's an absolute danger man. And we've come up against Inzaghi before. He, he, yeah, he beat us in 2007 Champions League. I'm not looking forward to the Merseyside derby at all. I'm not looking forward to any game that we play now because of this result. We were capable of this result as well. Sort of leads sort of um, exposed us to it as well, but we just had a little bit more quality than them. You'd say on paper we have more quality than Aston Villa, but a gaping hole for us comes back to Adrian. I don't know what it is with Adrian. Did well when he was he came in for uh, Allison when he was injured last season. 
did all right, made a couple of mistakes. I remember him bowling it out to Danny Ings and bringing back memories of um, Kiev um, and Carriers. But I maintain what I said about Carriers in the start, at the start of the summer when he was coming back to Liverpool. I would rather we, we had sent Adrian somewhere or sold Adrian and had Carriers as our second goalkeeper. I maintain that 100% and it's not just because of this video. I made a video about maybe four or five months ago about Carriers and that I wanted him to be our number two. Let him try and work through whatever happened at Kiev, work with our team. Let's not forget the season he was at Liverpool and he made that mistake in the Champions League final. He had the golden glove in the Champions League. He, he had the most clean sheets. Which is, you know, people laugh at that now, but he did. He was a young goalkeeper. He might only be, what, 25, 26 now? I would rather have had him as our number two. I think he would have been a very good understudy for Allison and our coaching staff as well. That's my opinion. People don't agree with it. But when you look at Adrian, where's Adrian going to improve? Where's he going to make his improvements? Where's he going to make his mental adjustments? He's 32 or 33. Let me just see if I can get his player profile up um, at this moment in time, um, if it will tell me. He's 33 years old at the moment. He's not going to improve. It even says here his weaknesses are error proneness and long shot saving. <laughs> if an app is telling me that and I'm not like, it's not a professional football app, come on. Um. Liverpool have got a lot of improving to do. Positives that you can take from the Aston Villa game is that this needs to have given that whole team a massive 100% steel toe cap boot up the arse. Needs to have. Otherwise, we're going to be fighting for top four. That's the reality. Top four would be what we're fighting for this season. Forget a title challenge because if, if we if we go and perform anywhere like that consecutively like we did against Aston Villa, lose a Merseyside derby that we haven't lost in fucking God knows how many years. If we go out and do that, then all confidence will get lost and it'll take a long time to build back. You can't lose much ground in the Premier League these days. Us and Manchester City set, set that benchmark of very few losses, lots of wins. That's the benchmark for the Premier League. And everybody else will start stepping up to it as well. Tottenham look great. Tottenham look fantastic. I don't like saying it. Everton look great. They look fantastic. Every single time I watch Everton and I'm hoping, man, I hope this team that they're coming up against is the one that you know beats them. They don't look like they're going to be beaten. And they don't look like they're going to be beaten anytime soon. And I genuinely don't like saying that. Hate saying that. But I look at Liverpool right now and I look at, as soon as it was confirmed that Alisson was injured, I got anxiety straight away about about the, the games that we've got coming up. Not looking forward to any single one of them. Really not. Um, I don't know what else we can do. We need to wait and see what happens from the international break. Who comes back where? How they come back? Who's going to get this virus or test positive for it or whatever? Who's going to have to isolate for two weeks and stuff like that away from the team? Likes of Mane and Thiago, yeah, they're misses for Liverpool. But make no mistake, possibly even with Alisson in goal, that result happens against Aston Villa. And that's not me deflecting away from Adrian's performance or Joe Gomez's performance or the defence's performance or our entire team's defensive performance. But even with our full starting eleven, I'm not sure that we avoid that Aston Villa defeat. I'm pretty sure maybe something like that still happens. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to do some follow-up videos about this sort of subject as well, about where do we go from here. It's a big setback. It's a big result that obviously Aston Villa got. Puts our goal difference in the frigging mud as well. Um, so we don't know how the rest of this season is going to play out. What It's been four games. There's 34 left to go. It's a long, long season. There's no need for a, a great deal of overreaction. But when I look at things at the moment right now, Sean, who would you put in goal Like while Alisson's out? I'd be looking at Kelleher. I would, because at least he's a young lad, and if he makes mistakes, it's because he's a young lad. He's got to learn. 
I can't, I, Adrian's not going to learn. Adrian's not Buffon. He's nowhere near that level where he could still learn at like the age of 42 or whatever he is. And also that, you know, Buffon was that, you know, he's that level of class goalkeeper anyway. Um, but yeah, I would, I'd be looking at our youth goalkeeper. Um, I can't say his first name. It's like Kaimon Kelleher or something, whatever it is. I would be looking to bring him in. Or recall, carry us off, look back off loan. Send Adrian out on loan. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below anyway. A very trying weekend um, for Liverpool fans. Um, one where you just basically avoid social media, you know, which is all right for me. I don't really go on social media a great deal anyway. But for those that live on it, yeah, you probably had a bit of a nightmare week. So listen, thank you ever so much for watching this video. I hope you've took something from it. I don't want to say enjoyed, but I hope you took something from it. Get some thoughts in the comment section below if you please. Um, but for now, I'm going to get out of here. Um, and try and have some more thoughts about this Liverpool team and what we can even do in the Merseyside derby because I've lost all confidence right now. That's how I feel. Like, I'm worried. Very, very worried about the Merseyside derby. So, yeah, we'll see what happens anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you later.